take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about one of the more common procedures I do, which is uh, ACL or anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction of the knee. Um, the ACL is one of the four main stabilizing ligaments in the knee, um, which also include the MCL, the LCL, which are the two outer ligaments, and then the posterior cruciate ligament, um, and the ACL are in the middle of the knee. Uh, the ACL specifically prevents translation of the tibia relative to the femur um, to provide stability to the knee when you're doing cutting or pivoting type activities. So oftentimes that, that ligament is torn in a non-contact fashion, um, either coming down from a rebound, playing basketball, or making a sharp cut during like soccer. Uh, we see it a lot in skiing as well as volleyball. And women tend to be predisposed to this injury a lot more so than men, especially in the non-contact uh, variety, um, because of the way some of their biomechanics work. So when you tear your ACL, oftentimes if you want to remain active in those types of sports that involve cutting and pivoting, jumping, that sort of thing, uh, the knee doesn't do very well without that ligament and so it becomes a surgical problem. Um, unfortunately, you can't just sew the ends of that ligament back together to repair it. You actually have to reconstruct it with a new tissue. With new tissue. Um, and so we can get that tissue from sort of two sources from your own body, which is an autograft, uh, and most commonly we take your hamstring tendons or your patellar tendon to do that. Um, the other source would be from a cadaver uh, or an allograft, and that um, can minimize some of the surgical morbidity uh, to the procedure, uh, but also comes with its own inherent risks. So once you've decided to undergo the ACL reconstruction procedure, uh, the, the procedure is performed under general anesthesia, oftentimes with the addition of a, of a nerve block, um, which helps put the front of the leg to sleep um, while you're asleep, so you require less pain medicine and less anesthetic to remain asleep. And then um, the knee is basically uh, visualized through the arthroscope, um, and we can take care, or I can take care of uh, much any other pathology that may have been injured at the same time that you tore the ACL during that arthroscopy. So that's sort of the first part of the procedure. So you may have injured um, articular cartilage, cartilage or lining the lining cartilage of the bones which we can address. Oftentimes you can tear a meniscus or the shock absorber in the knee at the same time um, and that can either be repaired or trimmed uh, depending on the type of injury that the meniscus has suffered. Once that's sort of taken care of, we you know, I'll look at the ACL and confirm indeed that it's torn. So oftentimes for an ACL, it lives here in the middle of the knee and we'll uh, drill a tibial tunnel on the, in the tibia from here to here and then a tunnel in the femur in the notch here out to here and we'll string that new ligament here and that prevents this, this bone from moving relative to this bone in the frontal plane as well as provides some stability against rotation. Once we're done with that, we close up the small arthroscopic incisions or what we call portals um, with some uh, nylon suture uh, and put a brace on the knee and you wake up. Um, basically after that, the early phase of the rehabilitation involves letting that ligament heal to the bone where those tunnels were. And then we progress through um, a motion phase and an anti-inflammatory phase into um, more strengthening and then finally returning to the sport of choice, usually about six months after the operation.